I put her after Johnny, and she's also a bit of a musician, but also a physicist. A <laughs> lot of love for physicists in the night. <laughs> I'm liking that. Okay, uh, so yeah, if you need someone, you know, to play the opening bars of Cagney and Lacey while equally detailing what's going on at the CERN Centre, Wendy's your girl. Um, and yeah, I thought she'd appreciate Johnny and, and get them with that. Wendy is uh, one of the team that runs Science Made Simple. She will find this a breeze tonight. The reason why? She speaks to about 60,000 people a year. Mainly school kids, educating them on science and, and making it simple, as the business name explains. Um, she's had a top-selling book, uh, Why Do Golf Balls Have Dimples? And the greatest thing about Wendy is the fact that she has starred on Tomorrow's World. <laughs> Not just starred, she's only fucking run over a tank of slime. No doubt espousing Euler's Law, a bit of Lepage, uh, and a bit of surface tension tomfoolery. So, give it up. Wendy Sadler, Science versus Ghosts. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. That is the best introduction I've ever heard in my life, I think. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yep. So, yes, I am a physicist. Um, I might not look like a typical physicist. I have a pair of boobs to start with. And um, I would like to tell you tonight why I love physics, because I think it's a great way for us to get over some of our deepest, darkest fears. So 35% of the public believe in ghosts. Some of them have a fear called phasmophobia. That's a fear of ghosts. And I'm going to tell you tonight why, if you understand a little bit of physics... You don't need to be scared of these ghosts. So, I'd like to introduce you to Vic Tandy. He's the hero of this story. I can't find a picture online of him anywhere, so I like to imagine he looks a little bit like this. <laughs> He's an engineer from Coventry University. Now, he, working, he was working in his lab late one night, as scientists and engineers do. And out of the corner of his eye, suddenly he saw a flash of a figure. He felt the hairs on the back of his neck stand up. And he was a bit freaked out. The next night, he returned to the lab. Um, that's Vic. That's not the ghost. He was a keen fencer. And it is relevant. I'll come to that in a minute. He was in the lab polishing his sword. <laughs> Careful. And um, <laughs> he had the same experience. A flash of light. He saw an image. He turned around. And this fencing foil, which was clamped in a vice, was vibrating violently. This is pretty freaky. Most people would have legged it. But he is an engineer, and he thought, something's happening. There's a vibration in this room that's making the foil vibrate. Now, to know what was happening with Vic and his sword, we need to understand a little bit about sound. Now, sound is made when something vibrates. Anyone with a rampant rabbit will know that. And um, <laughs> when you have a vibration, a pressure wave starts that you hear as a sound wave. So you may have seen this. If you take a wine glass and you rub your finger around, you can imagine it will make sound. <laughs> it's science. If I drink some liquid out of the glass, the sound will change. Everything has a resonant frequency. It's like if you push someone on a swing. If you've got kids, you know you have to push at a certain time. This, by the way, is not how to push someone on a swing. It's a geeky joke, okay? So don't worry about it. Um, but things vibrate, and Vic Tandy found that a vibration in the lab was happening at 18 hertz coming from an air conditioning unit. Now, why had no one noticed this before, before Vic? Well, basically, humans can only hear a limited sound. Anything below 20 vibrations a second, 20 hertz, is called infrasound. Elephants can hear it, but you can't, okay? So it is there, but you can't hear it. Now, why would this have an effect on the lab and on the sensations that you feel. Well, we can do a little tiny bit of maths. I hope this is the right one this time. Yeah, okay. So if you take the wavelength of the sound, which we know, if you want to find that out, you use the frequency and divide it by the speed of sound. Don't worry about that. But basically, Vic could work out how long the sound wave was. And if you look at his lab, he found out that the lab was about half the length of the sound wave. And that's important because the lab was resonating and amplifying this sound. And his blade of his sword was in the middle of the lab and that's why it was vibrating so much but what about the things that he could see so NASA in 1976 they did some research into 
the vibrations on pilots, what would happen if you vibrated a pilot. Okay, and um, amongst other things, they found that the human eyeball vibrates at 18 hertz, exactly the same as the air conditioning unit. So what was happening was the air conditioning unit is making the eyeballs resonate. And because your eyeballs are vibrating, it's setting off signals to the brain, which you see as images. Now, in 2003, my favorite science communicator, Richard Wiseman, did an experiment called infrasonic using this tube. They put infrasound into music and they found that when they had audiences listen to it, 22% of people felt really uneasy when the infrasound was playing. And they moved the infrasound around, so it was a genuine science experiment, but they still found there was a genuine result that infrasound made people feel sick and sad and upset. And in fact, since then, Vic has done other research and published papers, proper papers, about haunted places and found there is often infrasound there, including Coventry Tourist Information Centre, for some reason. <laughs> Very haunted, apparently. And of course, you can even get a product now which can actually generate that haunting feeling. If you want to add a bit of infrasound to your house, you can buy a Monstertronic if you've got $950 to spare. So to finish off, really, Vic died in 2005, and people don't really know why. So if you're superstitious, I'll leave you to worry about that one. But if, like me, you're a proper scientist, I would encourage you to use science as a way of taking away the fears in the world. So I urge you to go away, love science, and sleep well. Thank you. Thank you.